You're tuned into the first newscast devoted to the Highland Lakes area. Local team coverage on Tribune Headline News. Bringing you the stories you care about now. Hello everyone, I'm Connie Swinney for Tribune Headline News. As the Labor Day weekend approaches, law enforcement has launched a crackdown on drunk driving. The annual Drink, Drive, Go to Jail campaign includes an increased police presence as well as education about penalties, jail time, and statistics associated with alcohol-related violations on the roadway. Also, three teenagers land in jail and we have the latest on a fourth suspect facing organized crime charges in connection with a string of vehicle burglaries in Burnett. And some refer to it as the road to nowhere. Millions are planned for a proposed roadway in the Marble Falls Business and Industry Park. Hundreds of thousands more are planned for a study on that potential roadway. This for an area sparsely populated by a little over a handful of small businesses. Is this good for economic development? More on this later in the newscast. We'll be right back after the break. Replacing or building a new fence? Look to the most respected company in Central Texas, Hill Country Fence. Whatever your fencing needs, we strive to make you happy. Go online now and get a quote quickly and easily. Hill Country Fence, the most trusted name in fencing. Welcome back. The latest on a potential fourth suspect in a vehicle burglary case in Burnett in a moment. But first, a one-car rollover on Ranch Road 1431 East sends the driver to the hospital and prompts a warning about a dangerous curve. The crash involving a 1990 Buick tied up traffic for about an hour the afternoon of September 1st. Crews closed down one of two lanes near a curve about one mile east of Marble Falls. And crews were able to extract the vehicle which rolled over from a ravine onto private property nearby. Trooper what Frank happened? Randolph. Uh, it looks like the vehicle drove off to the right side of the road and may have overcorrected or had a problem with one of its tires. Let's get across the road and rolled over into the ravine here. The car was traveling east. The speed limit is 30 miles per hour. The investigator says this section of roadway is notorious for this type of accident. There's a curve back here. Uh, the speed limit is not as high as a lot of people think because they're leaving town. So a lot of people speed up to faster than they should go. Um, and it, it, there's really no room for error if you're not paying attention. The unidentified female driver was taken to Seton Highland Lakes with non-life-threatening injuries. DPS troopers have more to worry about with the upcoming Labor Day weekend. Authorities have launched a crackdown on those who drink alcohol and get behind the wheel. The latest holiday campaign is part of the agency's annual Drink, Drive, Go to Jail effort to reduce accidents. Troopers are working with city and county agencies as well. They expect to have an increased presence from now until after Labor Day. Driving the effort, sobering facts about alcohol-related incidents. A first offense will not only land a driver in jail, but result in loss of his or her driver's license and potentially thousands of dollars in legal and court-related fees and penalties. In 2009, data shows more than 27,000 crashes over and over 900 deaths and 17,000 plus injuries related to drunk driving in Texas. About 25% of alcohol-related accidents occur among motorists from 20 to 25 years old, and most of those accidents happen between 2 and 3 a.m. To avoid the worst-case scenario, DPS officials are sending out designated driver reminders and alternative travel plan tips should alcohol become a part of a social outing. We have the latest on a triple arrest involving 30 vehicle burglaries in Burnett. Michael Osell and Peyton Lowry, both 17 years old and both Burnett High School students, were arrested recently. A third person, 17-year-old suspect Kendall Hayes of Hutto, faces charges of engaging in organized crime. The trio were accused of stealing items, including electronics, purses, and at least one weapon. From cars and the Delaware Springs subdivision, police believe the incidents happened after a party overnight August 21st and 22nd. Investigators tell us since the arrest, 95% of the items have been recovered. New information in this case involves a potential fourth suspect. Authorities confirm that another teenager suspected in the burglaries has been sent to a private rehabilitation facility by family. Investigators say they expect the teen to surrender after the duration of treatment. 
The charge is a third degree felony punishable by up to 20 years in prison if convicted. Directors of the Marble Falls Economic Development Corporation vote to reduce the amount of money going towards a study to build a multi-million dollar road in the city's ailing industrial park. Mindful of both the bottom line and potential snags with the city council, the EDC recently slashed the price tag of a proposed engineering study from $700,000 to $350,000. The study is expected to look at linking Innovation Loop West and Innovation Loop East in the complex, just off Highway 281 in northern Marble Falls. The new expenditure doesn't include the cost of the new road, which could reach as high as $5 million. The EDC's budget is funded through sales taxes. Supporters of the study believe the move involves steps to improve the park and attract more business. Now, opponents believe the study amounts to a frivolous expense in a lagging economy. The park has eight businesses, one of which has closed. Remaining businesses include an office for the Highland Lakes Realtors Association and the Blue Bonnet MHMR facility. All combined, the existing businesses brought in approximately $16,000 in city property taxes last year. We have your extended weekend weather forecast coming up. At Ritchie Dental Group, orthodontic care isn't just for kids. I'm Dr. Mindy Ritchie, and I can help you have a straight, healthy smile no matter what your age. From wire braces that come in a variety of colors, Invisalign invisible braces that disappear in your smile, to neuromuscular orthodontics that relieves chronic TMJ pain and headaches. Offering a variety of modern orthodontic treatments, I help people of all ages look and feel their best. Why wait another day? Call me today. Windy conditions take their toll in at least one neighborhood overnight in Marble Falls. We had reports of gusts up to 20 miles per hour, enough to snap this medium-sized branch in half. And now we have the threat of severe weather on the East Coast. Just how will that affect us here? Here's Deanna Nail with more. Thanks, Connie. Hi, everyone. I'm Deanna Nail back with your PicayuneTV.com weather forecast for Burnett and Llano counties. Well, our chances of showers increase over the next several days. Let's take a look. Into this evening, scattered showers and thunderstorms mainly after about 1 a.m. Partly cloudy skies with lows around 74. East to southeast winds between 5 and 15 miles an hour. Chance of showers increases to 40%. Into Friday, scattered showers and thunderstorms stick around, mostly cloudy skies with highs near 92. North to northwest winds still between 5 and 15 miles an hour with the chance of showers still sticking around 30%. Into Friday evening, the chance of showers goes down to about 10% and mainly before 1 a.m., partly cloudy skies with lows around 66. Well, that's your forecast, everyone. We'll see you back here tomorrow on Friday for your weekend ahead. Connie, back to you. Thank you, Deanna. Let's step into sports headlines where Jennifer Fierro joins us with the latest on Marble Falls Volleyball and more. Connie, the Lady Mustangs recorded their shortest match victory of the season, sweeping Johnson City in three sets and literally starting and ending in 60 minutes. Afterwards, I had a chance to catch up with junior setter Taylor Koska and get her thoughts on the win. Did y'all have any goals going into tonight's match? I mean, this is the, yes. the second time y'all have swept the team at home. What were your goals going into tonight? Not to miss, like, our mo our maximum of starts to miss was 10, and our first hit balls over, like, free ball to kill it. We had to get at least 10, and I think we got more than that or something. So, so we did, we're doing really well in practice and everything, so. I felt like your hitters came through for you tonight. What did you think? I, they did. They, they're doing a whole, they're doing really, really well. Like, together, separately. Like, we have some hot hitters sometimes, but for, for, for the most part, it's like all of them together just crank up the heat. <laughs> just because it's Thursday doesn't mean that we're not going to talk some Marble Falls football with you. Had a chance to catch up with senior lineman Cyril Lemon. Here's what he had to say going into Friday's big matchup against Medina Valley. All right, so tell me, how long did it take y'all to put the win Friday night behind you? Uh, today. Really? Actually, well, today, today. I was so impressed with how the linemen played, and especially the way that y'all uh, ran blocked and pass blocked. As a lineman, which one do you prefer? Uh, run, because I get to knock people down. 
What are y'all, what are you thinking about Friday night? You know Medina Valley's coming in, they won yeah. big over Bernie High. Yes, yes, I think, I think if we get it together and we, like you say, we forget about last week, not totally forget, but forget about it, and we just come and play our game, we, we, we can win. That's it for sports. I'm Jennifer Fierro. Connie, back to you. Thanks, Jennifer. In Lano, an effort to curb alcohol and drug use is gaining steam among schools and community members. The Lano Alliance for Drug Intervention has launched a new program using the World Wide Web to encourage local parents of school-aged children to monitor their children's behavior. Officials are asking parents to buy a $5 drug kit through area pharmacies for voluntary drug and alcohol testing. Members of the Alliance include community and school leaders, the Lano ISD superintendent, oh, yeah. who is a member of the Alliance as well, supports the program. He explained that over the past few years, the school has experienced an increase in incidents of illegal prescription drug use. Even though the testing project is not a school-based effort, the school will remain active in getting the word out about the program through notifications and flyers. Superintendent Dennis Hill said the idea will give parents another tool to prevent or intervene if there is an issue with drugs. The kit also tests for nicotine and alcohol use. Results identify classifications of drugs. After a positive result, parents then take the sample to a private physician to determine the specific prescription or illicit drug. Check out the website on your screen to find out more. The superintendent added that parents are not obligated to notify the school. The district does conduct its own random testing throughout the school year for students in extracurricular activity. One more quick headline for you. Calvin Chamnus has resigned his place five seat on the Granite Shoals City Council. Officials confirm that Chamnus has moved from within the city limits, making him ineligible to serve. So now city leaders are taking applications for a temporary appointee. The council has 30 days to fill the spot, otherwise the seat will remain open until a regular election in May. That was Tribune Headline News. Thanks for watching. For ThePicayuneTV.com, I'm Connie Swinney.